Now that we've looked at the sources and how we interpret them, and how we develop new words and fill in the gaps, let's look at some specific areas, including numbers, talking to children, fishing, football and funerals. A few metalinguistic terms, terms for talking about language, are evident in the historical record. Wara, word, and karpa, sentence. In writing our Gunner Learner's Guide, we had cause to develop additional terms. The new term yitbi wara, meaning meaning, from yitbi seed plus wara, word, language, voice. And wapi wara, verb, from wapi, to do, perform, plus wara, word. Wapi wara karpa, a complex sentence, is a two verb sentence, literally. The traditional Ghana numbers, like other Aboriginal languages, consist of kuma, one, Bulaichi, two, Mankuchi, three or a few, Yarrabula, four, separate two, or Bulaichi, Bulaichi, four, two and two, Ngaraicha, mini. Teachers of Ghana in schools want a full Ghana number system equivalent to English. Now, Ghana has a large set of birth order names, up to nine, with separate male and female names, based on a common root. We took the roots of these birth order names for the numerals five to nine. We used erka, heap, for the tens, batuerka, big heap, for the hundreds, a reduced form of tawara, many, for the thousands, and a reduced form of wiwara, a multitude, for the millions. This base ten number system has been very well received, has been in use for nearly 20 years now. In transforming the language, we've deliberately introduced some changes from the documented grammar. One example of this is ergatives on plurals. It appears that the ergative suffix was only used on singular nouns, and there appear to be no distinct non-singular ergative pronouns. There appears to be no difference between non-singular transitive subjects and intransitive subjects and objects. Because word order is free, the usual cues found in English do not apply. So we saw you two cannot be distinguished from you two saw us. That may be okay when all communication took place face to face where there were many contextual clues to know who was doing what to whom. But in written language, the possibility for misunderstanding is greatly increased. Whilst there's no precedence for it, we decided to apply the ergative suffix to non-singular nouns, and to develop ergative forms of non-singular pronouns to remove this ambiguity. We figured if Ghana is going to live again, we needed to re-establish intergenerational transmission. Babies are the perfect respondent in beginning to talk a language. It doesn't matter what you say or how accurate the pronunciation is, babies are going to respond positively to their mums and other close relatives. However, we needed to provide the mums, dads, aunties, uncles and grandmothers, etc. with the expressions they need. We had to develop some new terms, like wanabalta, nappy, and ibidi, shower. We looked at the various situations and contexts in which we interact with babies and young children, like bath time, meal times, bedtime, toileting, etc., and the different functions of language, expressing affection, comforting a sick or upset child, giving warnings, introducing kin, naming and labelling things. In reviving Ghana, we've focused particularly on several areas, family, football, fishing, the three Fs, in fact, we might add funerals and festivals to these, giving us the five Fs. Fishing is a great activity for introducing Ghana. Fishing is a popular pastime amongst the Ghana. It's something you do with close family and with best mates. It's quiet, and there's mostly plenty of time to formulate what you want to say, unless you happen to have a fish on the line. The expressions needed are mostly short and not too complicated. Responses are straightforward. We had to develop terms for some of the fishing gear, ngatpareti, sinker, and giwiti, squid, and a range of other expressions, like wenchi tuku winchila, marka markandu, it might be undersized, you'd better measure it. Football, on the other hand, is quite different. Needed expressions need to be on the tip of the tongue and uttered spontaneously in response to what's going on in the game. But the expressions are short and fairly easy like Ngani Pani Tatando, kick it to me, or Nena Walter, you're hot, that is about to get tackled. We developed Ghana names for all the teams in the Football League, 
and translated the team songs. The Ghana language has an instrumental purpose in football because if the Ghana team knows and understands the code, it can give them an edge on the opposition who doesn't understand it. Funerals bring Aboriginal people together very often. This is because of the strong and resilient kinship structures and extended family. And it's also due in part to the very high mortality rate. Ghana people attend many funerals in a year. These occasions demand the same kinds of things to be said. We worked on a set of Ghana funeral protocols over several years, culminating in a publication in 2006. If you look around at some of the, uh, the funerals, that are, and there are lots, lots of funerals held in, in Aboriginal communities, um, and you, you hear them singing the songs in language. You go to Raukan and you hear, um, you know, Ngadanjeri sung in, in language. It's just magic. It just brings back the soul to, to the places. It's just beautiful. We translated well-loved hymns such as Amazing Grace, The Old Rugged Cross, Till We Meet Again, How Great Thou Art, etc. and translated the Lord's Prayer and developed a liturgy. We recorded all these on a CD. If someone wants, they can now conduct an entire funeral in the Ghana language should they wish.